In this video, we're going to take a look at how I painted up this custodian guard for Warhammer 40,000. So for me, I personally don't like the idea of my custodies being purely retro drama. To me, it's a bit too warm. I prefer the look of a more cold gold. So what I like to do is I mix my retro drama with Grey Knight Steel. Now, it doesn't have to be the air version. It's just that's what I own. But it's usually about four parts grain out steel to one to two to parts retro to armor. I'll just quickly make that up on the palette and I'll show you. So we're just going to take some of this grain out steel, roughly like say four parts. Then we'll mix in a block of this retro to armor, and you see we get like this really cold looking gold and that's exactly what I'm going for and so you see the difference between that and the retro drama that to me is what we're going to be using for my custodies so once you've made your mix it's just a simple case of painting this over all the parts of the custody that we want to be gold which is pretty much most of the model we're just going to exclude things like this part here on the shoulder pad because that is going to be purple. So once you've got that cold gold all over the model, this was uh, about two to three thin coats here. This is the effect. So what we're going to do next is we need to wash the model. And for that, we're going to use Nuln Oil. Typically, you would find on gold recipes that people use a lot of like Seraphim Sepia or Reichland Flesh Shade, but that would then warm up the gold anyway, which obviously we don't want. Whereas Nuln Oil will keep the cold gold on the actual like cold side of the spectrum. So when applying your Nuln Oil, this is just going to be an all over coat. So just apply it on decently thick, but if it starts pooling, just dry your brush and wick off any of that excess. But we're just going to go around the whole model apply Nuln Oil all over it. So with that Nuln Oil dry, you can see it gives a lot of depth to all of the detail across the model. So our next step is to highlight the model. And what we're going to do for that is we're going to return to the Grey Knight Steel, but just by itself this time. And we're going to apply it on all the highest edges of the model. So once your paint is ready, like I can say, just go for all the raised details, such as along here on the shoulder pad and these parts here on the helmet we're just looking to highlight just the ends of them just where the light would catch and then don't forget all the edges such as like on these eagles and especially on here any of these raised feather details we're just going to pick out all of them So with that grey knight seal applied, you can see how it just highlights all of the sharpest points of the gold. Now that it is finished, the actual gold armour is complete. So moving on, the next step is going to be all of the purple details. That's going to be things such as the plume, the shoulder pad here, and there's a few bits within this shoulder pad. But we're just going to base those in. So to base in the purple, we're going to use Alien Purple from the Armin Painter. Now don't worry that it's this is an air paint, that's perfectly fine. All that means is that the paint is pre-thinned. So once you've got your purple loaded up, it's just a simple case of applying it all over all these details that you want to be purple. Now the reason I'm doing purple here instead of the usual red is my custodies are based off of ancient Roman Praetorian Guard and purple is one of the main colours. Of course, if you're going for box art, this would be red rather than purple. Okay, with that purple base coated, we are now going to move on to do a wash over the purple. And for that, we're going to use Contrast Ultramarines Blue but we're going to thin this down to be more of a sort of wash glaze sort of consistency. And that's just going to go over all of the purple details. Okay, so when you're ready, just load up your brush 
and we're just going to apply this blue all over the purple just letting it run into those recesses and then leave this for approximately 10 to 20 minutes to dry and then we'll begin highlighting okay so with that ultramarine contrast dry you can see how much of a difference it makes really just helps define all these dark shadow areas and I've also applied it just on the lower half of the shoulder pad here so next up we're going to move on to our highlight color and this will just be nice and simple just picking out all these sort of raised bits on the plume and just this upper half on the shoulder pad and for our highlight color we're going to use coven purple from army painter uh, equivalents to this for gw would be something like gene sealer purple so on the hair it's just a simple case of picking out some of these higher parts on the plume and just following them along using the side of your brush a bit like a an edge highlight just catch them and just follow them down the plume then when it comes to the shoulder pad we want to thin the paint down a bit and just apply this just slightly on the upper half here and then we want to just wash off our brush quickly dry it off and then just feather feather the edge down into that darker purple just to help blend that transition just like that so with those highlights complete the purple is finished you can see how i've got a fade on the shoulder pad here going from the bright down to this dark blue so up next we're going to use matte black from the almond painter and this is going to be for all of the undersuit details such as here and here there's also some on the arm here and then very slightly around the front just here and then equally we can also use this color to reapply the black to any of the weapons such as this how i've got some gold here and any of the loincloth details down here so the only thing really to bear in mind here is just take your time with it just be careful not to get any of this black really on the gold that we finished but if you do then just return to that cold gold mix and just uh, re-establish the gold wherever you hit that black okay and with that black all blocked in we now are going to move on just to highlight it and to highlight the undersuit i'm simply going to use eschen gray so when we're highlighting the undersuit we just want to use this eschen gray just as a fine highlight on top of all of those lines that you can see on the undersuit just where the light is catching just touch this eschen gray to it this doesn't have to be a long step it's just a very quick highlight just to give that black a little something extra we're also going to use it for the weapon so this is just going to be an edge highlight again just wherever that light is catching and we're just going to use this eschen gray to continue the highlights on the weapon we're just going to move on to Dawnstone, but we don't need to do this on the undersuit because this is plenty enough. So same again, we're just going to edge highlight all of the sharpest edges, but this time we're going to look to do just a little bit less than that last step, leaving some of that eschen grey showing. And then after that, we'll move on to do the calligraphy details on the power weapon and for that we're just going to need to do our cold gold recipe again 
and just work your way around your spear highlighting any points that you deem need highlighting when we come to do the calligraphy details on the power spear to make sure I don't get any of this onto the rest of the black details what I like to do is load up my brush wipe off a good chunk of it almost like a dry brush and then hold the model so that I can get the edge of the brush sorry the side of the brush and just very lightly run that along the raised calligraphy details and it acts very much like a dry brush and it will hit just those raised details highlighting those up but leaving the flatter panels where the black is without any gold on it okay and there we go so that's the gold details all sorted i've deliberately left off this part which is going to be gold because i'm going to be doing this as a proper power weapon so if i get any blue onto it it's easier to leave it black for now and then repaint it gold once i'm done with the power weapon so moving on to the power weapon then i'm going to keep it relatively simple what i like to do with my custodies is i'm going to have this part here be dark and then i go for a lighter cutting edge and then i go for a edge highlight of white along the actual edge of the blade so to begin, we're just going to base the weapon with Kalidor Sky. So with that Kalidor Sky dry, we're going to take Lothurn Blue and we're going to run this just along this lower edge here, leaving the gap just here on this ridge line, dark. And one other thing that we're going to do, the actual line itself here, just very carefully edge highlight that line. If you make any mistakes, don't worry about it. Just return to the Calador sky and neaten up. Once you have that Lothurn blue edge established, we're just going to take some black and we'll run the black just in this darkest area here, just to act as a transition between the dark blue and the light blue. After that black stage is complete, we're just going to take any white. Here I'm using matte white from the Army Painter. And we're just going to do a simple edge highlight on all the sharpest areas of the part weapon. And with that white edge highlight complete, the power weapon is finished. Now you could do lightning effects if you want. I personally don't in my army, but if you wanted to, just let me know and I could get a YouTube short sorted out for you. Okay, so after the power weapon's complete, we're actually very close to finishing the model completely. All we've got left to do is the tabard down here, which is going to be uh, red. And then we've just got the eyes, which I personally am going to do blue. And last but not least, we've got all the gems around the model. So starting off, we're going to do the tabard. We're going to base it with Mephiston Red. Then we're going to highlight it with Evilson Scarlet. And then a very small highlight of Wild Rider Red. So just load up your brush with that Mephiston Red. Paint it all over these tabard areas. Just being really careful not to get any of this onto any of that gold. One thing to quickly mention is after that Mephiston red step, I did come in with Norn Oil, as you can see here. I just 
totally forgot to record it. But yes, so after the Mephiston Red, just give it a wash of Norn Oil and then we'll move on to the highlights. For the highlights, we want to just pick out some of these lower areas here. Just places where the shadow won't be catching. So like here, along here, a little bit on here. And lastly with that Wild Rider Red, it's just going to be more of a dot highlight just on the highest points, such as here, and just on the edge here. And with that step done, the red tabard is done. So next up, we'll move on to the eyes. So for the eyes, just stabilize yourself. We're using Calador Sky here. And just very lightly paint it into that eye socket. Once that Calador Sky is done, I'm going to come in with Lotham Blue and we're just going to touch the lower half of the eye. Leaving some of that Calador Sky in the upper half. And that's really it for the eyes. Super simple, but it looks effective. So the final step is going to be all of the gems. So what we're going to do, we're going to use some of this technical paint from Citadel. I actually really like these technical gemstone paints. But we need to base the gems in a bright silver first. So it's just as simple as going around, finding all the gems, and just giving them a coat of this bright silver. Now there are usually a lot of gems on Custodes. So just make sure you you get all of them. Okay, once that silver is dry, we want to just load up a decent bit just on the end of our brush. And don't wipe this off. Just come in to the gem, start at the lower half, and just drag it over the gem. With those gems painted, your model is now complete. So all that's left to do is base your model however you like to base your models, but this custodian guard is finished. So I want to thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out my Patreon if you want some more full tutorials. Thank you so much.